Okay, so today I want to talk about the lizard stretch, otherwise known as Spider-Man stretch. We do this a lot during class, and I think it would be great to kind of touch base on what the pose should actually feel like, some of the big cues to really make sure that we're doing it correctly and getting the most benefit out of this uh, pose, as well as all the different variations. So your, your typical Spider-Man or lizard pose um, starts from a kind of a standard lunge kneeling position, and you're bringing your hands to the insides of the feet. Um, hands are about you know shoulder width apart or so, and from here, um, you if you really want to get deeper into that hip flexor, you really work on trying to get those elbows down towards the ground. Now to get down here, you really want to focus on keeping your back as flat as possible. You don't want to round to get down here, but to really get those hips pushed down, you want to think about leading with your chest and your belly button first. So keeping that back flat, keep those shoulder blades back as you kind of lead forward with the chest. Aim that belly button towards that front foot. And that's going to really help you get deeper into the stretch. Now you want to make sure that your shin um, is is pretty much uh, perpendicular to the ground um, or your knee basically is stacked on top of your ankle. It doesn't go past uh, your ankle as you're getting down to this pose. Now a couple different variations you can do is um, if you're, if this is before class and you want to keep the stretch very active, so you can switch back and forth between each side and do kind of a two or three second hold. Again, we're working on that flat back, pressing that belly button towards that front heel. And another thing you can do as well, um, in this pose, something to think about is taking the front heel, so whatever foot's in front, you wanna take that heel and then the back knee. And I want you to imagine digging them in the ground towards each other. So um, as you're down here, I want you to press down through the heel and that back knee, and then I want you to squeeze those two together, dig them in the ground towards each other. You know, feel a lot more activation in that hip flexor here as you're doing that and as you're switching towards each side. So as you press down, um, dig your knee and your um, front heel toward each other. Now another variation you can do is deciding whether or not this back knee is on the ground or it's actually lifted from the ground. This will get you a little bit deeper in the stretch if you have that flexibility. It will also help to kind of strengthen this leg back here overall. So if you're going to dig, you're going to dig the toes and the heel towards each other at the bottom of this position instead of the knee. So another um, active variation that you can do as well is uh, hip circles down in the bottom of this uh, lizard position. So while you're down here, thinking about, um, and I like to have my knee down actually for this one, although you can have the knee propped up. So I want you to think about opening up the angle of the knee and drawing circles sideways, counterclockwise and clockwise with this hip. So again, pressing that back flat, leading with the chest, and then just think about drawing circles, 10 to the right, 10 to the left, or clockwise, counterclockwise, however you like to do it. Um, this is really good for getting that hip nice and opened. You can also turn your chest towards the ceiling or towards the side, get a slightly different angle there in this stretch. And again, working on those hip circles, 10 uh, in each direction. Really opening up that angle, finding uh, some really good rotation in that hip. And you can even turn it facing the other direction. So not just kind of linear, you know, one side, but the more different angles, um, the more flavor you can really put into this lizard stretch, um, I think the more benefit you're really going to get out of it. So another variation um, sometimes we go over during class is whether or not this foot is flat on the ground or you can actually take your knee and kind of shove it out to the side so you're on the outer edge of your foot. And this will actually kind of get you a little bit deeper into the stretch in just slightly different way. It's a little bit more of the outside of the hip versus kind of the inner hip. And you can even do your hip circles out here as well. I know it's a little bit tougher because your knee is now on this kind of like more angled flatter plane. Um, but just a little bit, again, a different variation that you can try just kind of dig deep into this uh, lizard pose here for a minute and again you can do the same thing you can twist up to the ceiling look back that way look the other way 
So um, if you're, if this is before class and you want to kind of mobilize your hips for some squats later, again, you're keeping it active, you're keeping those hip circles, you really don't want to hold a static stretch. Now after class, or perhaps later in the evening, if you just want a, a good relaxing stretch, this would be a good time to just kind of rest here. Um, you can have your foot flat, you can have it out to the side, you can do a static hold, just kind of look up to the ceiling. Feeling a lot of it out here on the uh, very outsides of my hips, for example. Um, so this is uh, kind of a really good variation to get into. And do the other side. So this is a really good stretch to kind of focus on um, at least two or three minutes almost on each side. And um, you don't have to cluster them all together. You don't have to do like three minutes on one side then three minutes on the other. You can kind of do like one minute on one side, one minute on the other, and then switch to a different variation. Maybe the knees out to the side. Maybe you look up to the ceiling. Maybe you're trying some hip circles. Um, but really kind of digging down deep into this uh, lizard pose here. And again, keeping that back flat and then keeping that front heel and then the back knee or the back foot, if your leg is off the ground, kind of digging and pressing in towards each other is really gonna help to uh, set those hips in motion. Now, something else I also like to kind of pull in there as well is to just pull it back into a hamstring stretch. Um, it's really easy just to kind of come from this front bent knee position and then just kind of shift your weight back and kind of straighten this leg out here. And this is a really good uh, hamstring stretch to kind of counter the, uh, hip, uh, the hip stretch that we got earlier. And now if you're down here in this uh, kind of hamstring runners kind of stretch, um, now what you want to think about is again leading forward with the chest, keeping that back flat, trying to get your belly button and chest to touch against your thigh. And now I want you to dig your heel into the ground and then while keeping your heel locked in place, take your entire leg and your butt and shove it backwards, okay? So that heel is just kind of locked in there and then you just drag your entire leg back and that's going to really help to set your hips square and really dig deep into that hamstring just a little bit more. Flex the foot so you don't want the foot just kind of pointing but you want to flex it just a little bit, dig the heel in, drive the entire leg back, and then press that back flat, belly button right against the thigh as low as you can. And then you can go to the other side. So again, this is a really good counter to the lizard stretch. Once you finish the lizard, you can pull that leg back into the hamstring, flatten that back, press that chest, that belly button down towards the thigh as best as you can. Look straight ahead, flex the foot, dig the heel into the ground, and then try to drag your entire leg and your butt and your tailbone backwards, okay? So heel is locked, drag that whole leg backwards as you press your chest forward. So there's kind of like chest forward, leg backward, kind of two directions kind of going here to really get that hand hamstring stretch and you're keeping your uh, hips basically square as you're doing this as well. <sighs> Remember to breathe. Okay. I totally forgot. Breathing is good in these kinds of positions. It kind of helps your uh, you know, muscles to kind of relax uh, along with uh, a lot of your breathing. Kind of a mental thing as well with a lot of these stretches. So I hope you enjoyed the different variations on the lizard pose. One more thing, if you're up for the challenge and want to try something very different, and lizard comes really easy to you. So this is kind of a, uh, a yoga variation. It's an arm balance, actually, that you can try. So as you're down here in this lizard position, you want to take your shoulder, kind of, kind of hook it right under that leg or that knee. And to get into this arm balance, it's really interesting. You're going to eventually just be on your two arms. So you're going to take this uh, front leg here. You're going to shift the weight back onto your hands and that back knee. And you're going to start to lift that leg off the ground. And your tricep here is going to create a shelf. All right. So now you're going to straighten that leg out and then try to shift your weight onto your hands and lift the other leg off the ground. So now you're in this really interesting kind of arm balance right here. That's just something interesting if you wanted to try that out. Show you what it looks like on the other side. I think I'm a little bit better on the other side. So digging that shoulder right under, shifting that weight off of the leg, straightening it out, creating a shelf, then lifting the other leg off of the ground. And here we are with our cool arm yoga balance. Yeah. So lizard pose.